Min Sum Kim is the executive director of the Edith Bush Institute. She's joining me to discuss the training provided for aspiring nonprofits in Central Florida. There are many local nonprofits who are started by people who are just really passionate about what they do and they may not know how to start or how to run a local nonprofit. So this is very important. How do you support them? Yeah, so we're so lucky here in Central Florida to have um, a resource like the Edith Bush Institute. Um, not every community has a, um, a training institute specifically for nonprofit organizations. So uh, we were born out of the Edith Bush Charitable Foundation. So when the foundation was making donations to nonprofits, um, they realized that they wanted to make sure that people with passion um, are able to be um, strong financial stewards of the donations that they receive. And so what happened was in tutoring and seminars and workshops, the work kind of just continued to grow. And we actually became our own nonprofit for a little bit. Um, and in 2000, so 22 years ago, um, we became part of the Kramer Graduate School of Business at Rollins College to align um, that passion is important. Um, and we need to have that because that's what draws in strong board members. That's what draws in strong donors and volunteers. Um, but you also have to have um, the business side of the nonprofit organization. And so we have trainings like um, nonprofit um, budget basics or nonprofit accounting basics, and we continue to offer that. Um, we also have the certificate of volunteer management. We talk about leadership, people go through um, DISC assessments and really understand like who they are as an individual and how do they show up and how, they, how do they continue to lead. Um, we have classes like strategic planning and nonprofit management essentials and fundraising. And all of these classes um, really help nonprofits to um, ignite that passion and make sure that um, not only is it drawing people in, but it, it keeps people there. Um, to be able to continue to see, wow, um, the time that I'm spending or the money that I'm giving or um, the connections I'm making really is advancing the mission of the organization. Nonprofits are community organizations. Um, it, is, um, it belongs to the community, right? And so um, it's important for the community to be able to continue to have trust and continue to be able to see that organization for many, many, many years. And we were able to do that um, when we have, when we're able to take care of the people inside the organization who keep the organizations running um, as they continue to work with people in the community, the citizens that make up Orange County. If someone's passionate about something and has an idea for a nonprofit, what mm -hmm. resources do you have for them to start? We actually have a partnership with um, SCORE and we teach around the, uh, how to start a 501c3. Go through that class to make sure that people are going in with eyes wide open. We have 6,600 nonprofits just in Orange County that's registered. What kinds of other nonprofits are around you? Um, are there partnership collaboration? Are you a program? that needs to start or are you a nonprofit organization that needs to start? And really helping organizations discern that and know that truly the first five years is gonna be really hard. Um, it's gonna be hard to build up um, the data to say that you do have a need. Um, it's gonna take up, it's gonna take time to build relationships and create um, a case for support so that funders can give um, to your organization. Um, it's gonna take time to be able to um, build relationships with board members. First couple years, it just takes some of that time. And so how can we ensure that they go in with eyes wide open? Um, that class is what, that, what that's about. And so, you know, after they start their 501c3, um, sometimes obviously there's a couple things that need to happen, right? One is you need to find good board members. And so um, we have a board member directory where people can post some if, they, if they're looking for a board member. Um, and then if they find that board member, um, having going through a certificate and board orientation to say that, so that they understand they got a lot of work to do as a board member. They need to show up, um, not just be a board member, be, but be on board with the organization, right? And so um, we have those conversations with them through our training. And then maybe one other resource is we have the foundation directory online. So it's a membership resource, but it allows for nonprofits to be able to um, access a 
the best database really um, in the nation. We spend a pretty significant amount to make sure that that resource is available and nonprofits can research um, all types of funders in the community, not only here, but nationally. We can provide training on how to find grant funding and things like that. And so we're just there to really like help support that passion um, and really make sure that that's sustainable. I guess one other thing I could add to that um, is that um, just recently we announced a partnership with Orange County government through um, the American Rescue Plan Act and we work what we're calling Empowering Good. Um, and what's really been so neat about that is for organizations that have been grassroots, that have been in the community for a long time, 5, 10, 15, 20 years maybe, um, but they just haven't been able to grow to a place where maybe the founder can see another successor or the founder hasn't found a way to make sure that there is a way for a new executive director to come in. We're using this Empowering Good program to be able to address five areas of learning paired with the coach and to be able to really start thinking about what does capacity growth look like um, in a very honest way and um, for the organizations to be able to leave with what we're calling the Sustainable Nonprofit Action Plan. So that's an exciting partnership, I think, with nonprofit organizations that I think is important to highlight because it's a once in a generation opportunity to be able to have something like this created at such a time as this um, so that we can continue to be able to lift and make sure that we don't decrease the number of nonprofits, but we can actually continue to grow nonprofits in both their capacity and capability so that um, it continues moving forward in the years to come. What I've noticed as a struggle for some nonprofits mm -hmm. is finding a competent, dedicated executive director. Mm -hmm. Do you have training for for any employees of nonprofits to just get people ready to work for nonprofits and be able to support them? That's exactly what we do. Um, our main people that we serve um, are the people who work in the nonprofit organizations. Um, what we say in our, in our organization is we have the best job ever because what we get to do is serve um, the heroes in the community, serve the servants, those who are really serving every day in the community. Um, and so that's exactly what we do. That's what the certificate in nonprofit management is for, um, for those who are doing program programmatic work and um, maybe managing their first team for the first time. That's what the certificate of leadership practice is for. Um, and so we have, and for people who've never done volunteer management, but they have, they're really like managing perhaps a hundred people, right? Um, every year, that's an HR function, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a volunteer manu manual? Do you have a volunteer orientation? Do you have volunteer exit interviews? Do you have, like, are you, are you valuing your volunteers in a way and really making sure you're caretaking um, their investment in your organization? Um, those kinds of conversations we have, have in, our, um, in our nonprofit classes. Um, so this past year, we celebrated 22 years of being part of the Kramer Graduate School of Business. And I had one organization um, executive director come to me and she was like, I just need you to know um, that many years ago when we came to the Edith, before the Edith Bush Institute, we were a nonprofit that was getting ready to close. But we came to the Edith Bush Institute, we went through the training and we grew up. We grew up to be able to continue to do the work we do. And we're able to continue to doing the work we do because of that. And they're not a huge organization, um, but they're a sustainable organization. And I think um, stories like that really fuel me personally. Um, it wasn't my work because I wasn't around when they received training from the Institute, but that training, there are principles that continue in nonprofit organizations that we continue to teach. Obviously it has to be modified to the time, right? Um, but making sure that uh, we address some of those things and some of the principles just don't go away. What have been most of the challenging components of nonprofits? What do you see people coming to you with? We, we get them all. <laughs> we get them all. So I think financial resources is obviously number one. And so fundraising is a big portion of our classes, right? And one of the big things that we have to teach is that 
Um, there's a Giving USA report that happens every year. Um, and that report, for as long as it's been happening, shows that giving in Florida, 80% comes from individuals. How much of your funding pie come from individuals? And saying, if it is true that giving in the United States is, comes from individuals, who are you needing to con like meet with and steward and ignite passion and connect heart to heart with um, so that they can connect in with your mission, um, head, heart, and gut? And so a lot of our classes obviously is around that, and that would be a huge challenge that executive directors may come to us for. I think the second thing is obviously the board. And the reason that's important is because the board ensures that the mission continues and the executive director reports to the board, right? Um, but how strong the board is really dictates how strong the organization is sometimes. Mm -hmm. The partnership, the dance between the executive director and the board um, needs to be pretty good. There has a time to follow and a time to time to lead, right? And so ensuring that the board members understand their roles and their critical roles, I think is often a number number two challenge, right? And then number three is, um, I think in recent years, just in the past couple years, um, it really has been like, how do you care for the mental health of the people inside the organization? People who are providing that support to the community who might need more. I think this is going to be a continued challenge um, for the sector in the years to come. That conversation is not often, it is brought, up, brought to EBI through the executive directors, but it's also brought to us by people who make up the nonprofit professional community. And so those are some things that I think about with inflation um, and what's going on in the economy. Um, that continues to be a challenge. If you're used to getting baby formula for let's say $5 and now it is $10, right? And you have to continue to provide that resource or um, supply chain has a, created a challenge in that or if the workforce is not available and they're choosing to work in a different sector, how do we attract them? And so you've got the financial piece, you've got the leadership piece, you've got the economic environment, and then you've got people. All of those things are not very different from a for-profit organization yes. challenge. Um, the best part of it is that there's purpose. The best part of it is that there's passion. And the best part of it is that it does impact our community. But there are a lot of reasons for how some of those best things can be clouded, um, I think, because of whatever it is that might be happening in the community. <laughs> are there any scholarship opportunities available through the Institute? Yeah, so scholarships are available because of the Edith Bush Charitable Foundation. And so what happens is um, any organizational member who join, you know, this is our way to say that your people are worth investing in and your organization is worth investing in. And so any organization that participates um, as a member has access to um, scholarship funds for each workshop. You just apply for it online and then it's 30%, right? So, um, and that's off of the member rate, which is already 50% discounted. And the reason for that is because um, we want to make sure that we can continue to provide training and be a trusted resource in the community. If we can make it free, obviously we would. <laughs> um, but I also think there's something to be said about that. For a professional service and for people who are professionals and making a living wage, they deserve professional training. Making sure that um, nonprofit leaders are making business decisions, their boards are making business decisions, um, at their organization to retain their best talent? And how do you continue to make sure that that also applies to nonprofits? How can the community support the Institute? By helping us tell others about the Edith Bush Institute. We shouldn't be the best kept secret. That is not something to be proud of. Uh, we want to be a widely known resource in the nonprofit sector. If the community can help us do that, I think that would be great. And then I think the last thing is rather than supporting the institute, really support the nonprofits you're engaged with. Or like if you're not engaged, to get engaged with the nonprofit. Because when a community member shows up to volunteer, what happens is 
nonprofits continue to have what's needed to be able to keep their organizations going. Not only that, but an opportunity is filled for that community member um, to be able to do something really, really, really impactful. And so I think that would be like the best thing. How can we inspire this culture of generosity and philanthropy and loving our neighbors well? That would be the best thing. For those who are interested in learning more, how can they do that and stay in touch? Give us a call. Reach us out on social media. Our emails are monitored. You can find my email and email me. We're all willing to connect with um, nonprofits and to be able to be a support. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate all the work that you do. Of course, and thank you for everything you do um, and the ways in which you advocate for the nonprofit sector. If you're enjoying this show, please subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts.